Hello and welcome back to the Wisdom Factory. I'm Heidi and today I'm here with Rika Fulion and she is in South Africa and maybe somebody of you remembers that I was in South Africa for the Integral Tour and for the Integral Conference and actually on July 3rd I have published a post in, on thewisdomfactory.net and also some videos to talk about my experience because it was just great. And <laughs> I'm so glad that Erika came with me and I really was struck not only by her personality and her leadership qualities and the, the tour which she organized and, the, the, and accompanied us and also the, the conference, which was great. You know, whoever would have thought that in South Africa is a conference in, in integral, you know, we always, we Europeans, we are sort of arrogant. We think, oh, Africa, it's far away. So it was so really great. And I discovered that there is a different understanding of things, of life, and also of the concepts and the practices. And so I would like to explore with you, Rika, what the difference is, how your approach is to integral, to spiral dynamics, and to life. But before we go into that, I would like to invite you to introduce yourself a little bit, what your work background is and, uh, you know, what you want to share that people know about you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Heidi. Thank you so much. And first, thank you for visiting us. Um, as we discovered, I wanted to meet you for quite a few years. And then you came to South Africa to meet me. <laughs> and it was really very special for me. Thank you for uh, considering Africa and for coming and the work that you are doing. It's phenomenal. So thank you for that. Um, so I um, had a corporate career and I um, left corporate in 2003 to start a small consulting house with the name of Mandala Consulting. And um, Mandala is, um, of course, from, uh, derived from the Carl Jung um, philosophy of um, all the, the it's a Jungian uh, practice, organizational practice. Um, but, you know, being in Africa and working across countries, um, uh, Mandala helped me. I, I work in 42 different countries. I realized that our theoretical um, approach to corporate um, it does not necessarily describe uh, what I found in emerging economies like Africa, like Peru, like um, even Hong Kong for that matter, India, I, I've, I, there was other realities there. And um, I got to um, finish my doctorate in 2008. It was on inclusivity. And, um, but I, 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 uh, one of my insights was like, there's something into spiral dynamics. There's something in integral that I need to explore. Um, my supervisor told me I'm not allowed to put things in the PhD if I don't describe it. And I said, I'm not going to take it out because there's something there that I need to find, to find out more about. And I actively started to look for, although I read up on integral, read up on spiral, actively start to, uh, to understand it theoretically better and academically better after 2008. Um, I was very, very fortunate um, because a lot of, especially spiral work, uh, happened in the cauldron of South Africa. In um, uh, This is where Don Beck came to for 64 years. And with him worked Lorraine Laubscher, um, who uh, later I became academic supervisor too, and she finished her PhD on age 83, but she was with Don all the 64 times that he came here. And um, her contribution to Spiral is African philosophy. And um, because of that, it describes beige and purple and red, um, very rich in a rich oral way um, and I, I think that um, you know if one, one take a theoretical stance uh, that uh, um, spiral specifically does not integral so much but spiral deals with adaptive intelligence then um, it, it almost makes sense that in a country like South Africa there will be or Africa for that matter there will be um, insights in how to deal with beige purple red um, life conditions yeah, we need to, to explain a little bit for people who don't know what that means. First of all, Don Beck was, uh, he sort of appeared in, in, in 
in the film, no? Uh, no? How was it called about Nelson Mandela? Uh, it wasn't Invictus that you are speaking about. Invictus, yeah, yeah. but he, he didn't appear, but he was uh, sort of the force behind South African uh, recovery from apartheid without without a uh, civil war and as I understand also Lorraine. Uh, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes, so Don worked with all the big political figures then with Lorraine mm -hmm. and um, of course the, you know, um, uh, coming from Texas, he understood a particular part of the South African psyche particularly well, but Lorraine understood the, South, the African part of it particularly well too. Mm -hmm. And they made a phenomenal team, um, the two of them. So I uh, dealt with um, Nelson Mandela, then of course with Desmond Tutu, with um, Ramaphosa, our current president, uh, with uh, F.W. de Klerk, who was the other uh, Nobel Prize winner uh, from South Africa for our peaceful the, uh, democracy that we had. And um, they really helped um, us to reach uh, a, a peaceful conclusion, a peaceful democracy, a new constitution um, that uh, in 1994 were established. So yeah, they have done phenomenal work here in South Africa. And then you I mentioned the colors and we should also uh, say to people who are not familiar with spiral yes. dynamic what the colors mean okay so uh, a crash course in spiral will be something like um we play life for different reasons monopoly do you know well they know what's monopoly monopoly mm -hmm. of life where you play and you go around start like uh, and start uh, in my metaphor will present um money you know so you get money for different reasons we live for different reasons um and um uh the, the basic theory deal, deals with this environment and then there's a specific thinking that you need to develop to adapt to that space that will give you almost a superpower to cope in that context and um graves clear graves was the original fa father of spiral dynamics um but he um coded it very academically uh, as A, B, C, D, E for, for def different life conditions. And then he started in the middle of the alphabet, N, O, P, Q, and he started there and he coded that for different thinking structures. And he brought the two codes together in a spiral that oscillates between collectivism, individual, collectivism, individualism, like that. So A, N is the first um, category, which is the individualistic category of only survival. If you are there, all that you are busy with is surviving. You don't have food, you don't have, maybe, it can be, maybe I'm old and I'm sick, but uh, mostly it is like people that um, is preoccupied with the life condition of surviving in whichever way it really is. And then um, if I use my example of monopoly, um, uh, from there comes a thinking structure that evolves if th that survival is sorted, a uh, thinking structure that comes, which is I play life to, for, for I sacrifice me for my tribe, my family, my community, my father, um, the authority figure. Um, and I do it in a relational manner. So I, I, I sacrifice me for my tribe, my, my, my people, and children are important. It's really the overarching thing. Storytelling are important. So if I play a game like Monopoly, I will take money from one child to keep the other child alive because that's what I'm doing. I'm, it's, I do it for the children. That's not stealing. In some places it will be seen as, as stealing, but in that thinking structure, it is just... My, I, keep, I give a better life for my children. Mm -hmm. and then from there sometimes comes a thinking structure, not always sometimes, comes a thinking structure which asks, where am I if I am not my tribe? So um, uh, if I break free from that, who am I um, without my tribe? So it's a very important psychological function of individualization, who am I? Uh, but not a lot of people, you know, internationally we know um, in the two first thinking structures that I already described about, uh, in the first one, there's 9 to 15%, which can be refugees and people that really survive. And in the rest of the world, about 65% that do it for their families, tribal. So um, that's already almost, you know, 80% of people that 
think those ways. So we just need to, to look a bit for that and we will find it in all spaces, even in developing countries. Um, then um, the breaking free from there is another 15%, uh, which leave us with a internationally a 10, 11, 12% for all the other thinking structures that I will describe, which is then a, 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 the next collective system, which we see often in Europe, it's rule following and it's also a, um, collective in the sense that I will sacrifice because if we all follow the rules, there will be good infrastructure. It will be, there will not be moral decay. I play life for the future. So I sacrifice so that we all can have a better future. And from there come a thinking structure that leads to capitalism because it asks, okay, but I'm tired now of this collective society that follow rules. I want to take life in my own hands and I want to achieve. Um, so if I play Monopoly, I only play it if I can win. You know, I'm, I'm winning and I'm achieving, um, which then again goes into a structure that we also see a lot in Europe, especially in the Nordic, Nordic countries as well. And in, uh, in um, uh, a lot in uh, the Netherlands, which is a, stru uh, a structure which is almost philanthropic of nature. It becomes collectivist again, where it is, um, I will sacrifice me for the earth or for humanity or for the globe, whatever that becomes. So that's more or less where I would like to stop now. So what happened with Don Beck when he was in South Africa on one of his trips? was he was trying to work with this theory and there was a white president that is there was only white one white president so people that go and google who it was mm -hmm. will be able to find the name i'm not allowed to say who it is so i, I will refrain from doing that and then an african president and they were saying exactly the same thing but they could not hear each other because of nationality and in south africa we speak color we so we speak white black indian colored for people of mixed um, domination or race and um, it's a, a, a law to speak that way because it is a, we count um, the number of African people or black people in business to rectify um, what we have done in the past so um, uh, uh, in, in this language a black president and a white president said the same thing they were speaking uh, D -S, uh, D -D -A, um, D yeah, the is. I'm now unsure of the last letter now quickly uh, about that. They were speaking blue, but uh, it wasn't called blue there yet. So Don Beck became very angry <laughs> because he says, you say, not angry, uh, you know, excited. And he, he quoted Claire Graves who said, God damn it, a person has the right to be who they are. We mustn't change people. And he try and change and then he said you know you are saying exactly the same thing but you can't hear each other because you see color and then he says let me give you a color code and he unpacked the colors of the systems that i just spoke to so he called uh, expressive colors uh it take, just took a color wheel today some people will try and make it esoteric they link it to uh uh, chakras and things but for Don it was just a color code according to the color wheel for the expressive colors he gave a bright color like beige red orange and for the collective systems he gave uh, more uh, color with a lower frequency because the eye is lower it's suppressed and he gave it purple blue green and then he translated it in what we know today in spiral dynamics which goes beige for survival purple for tribal, red for that I want power, uh, who am I if I'm not my tribe, uh, blue for uh, rules and collective systems and uh, 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 rule following and um, uh, societal uh, 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 um, law and regulation, orange for uh, capitalism or I want to achieve and green for phil phil philanthropy or hum humanity. Um, and then, of course, there's a second tier that I haven't tackled yet, which mm -hmm. is you know, and turquoise and coral even. Uh, yeah, but let me stop there for now. Okay, so that's an overview about uh, the colors and how they came into being. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, because the, when you have only letters, you cannot really imagine. And when you say blue, you know immediately what it means. So that's very nice. And in the... In the trip, you showed us a lot of purple and yeah. you helped us to appreciate purple because in our countries, we, or in, let's say in, in integral circles, we think we are growing up. 
and out of yeah. all these lower stages of development. We want to be in the highest stage of development. Yeah. And you showed us how beautiful these stages can be and that it's not to be dismissed. And I would love you to talk a little bit about this because that was one of the big insights I had. And as we uh, hardly ever come into contact here with purple, unless, you know, in a sort of um, strange way, let's say. Yeah, yes. uh, yeah it, was, it was really impressive for me. Mm. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that, um, sharing that learning idea. And also thank you for opening yourself up for that because it can be seen as primitive and it can be seen as dangerous. Red can be seen as dangerous. And um, I think I, I would like to honor Lorraine here, Lorraine Laubscher, because she made me aware of this. Uh, but then also in her doctorate, she wrote, she contextualized spiral as human niches. And a niche is something that a person excel at. And, and, and in this theory, because you ask a specific question, you are particularly good at something. <laughs> that doesn't say you ask other questions. You can be very bad at them, but you are good at. And of course, um, Beck would say, but we have all of these colors in us that are just maybe not activated because the uh, life conditions didn't ask of it to develop, to cope in that, that, that circumstance. So he speak about codes and barcodes and that we are courts, not notes. Uh, but in Africa, as in some of the other emerging um, uh, countries, life conditions ask of us to be able to cope like with survival where babies where you guys saw that a little bit too like un, uh, the poor people the real poor, uh, beggars under that sleep under breaches people that really survive uh, but a beautiful purple there's beautiful purple in africa and the the beautiful part of that is the relational ability it's the storytelling it is wisdom that is beyond that i think that we as western uh, look uh, my roots are french so i think i have a french influence and i studied in academic schools that blue of nature um i grew up in afrikaans neighborhood that was um in afrikaans is one of the is uh, derived from um a, a, a dutch type of flemish type of language so mm -hmm. lorraine also speak about the importance of language in your forming years as a way of it impacts your narrative and your logic mm -hmm. because the, the, the narrative that i use is more, more digital where in africa oral history is metaphorical and the purple is metaphorical so um it's beautiful but you must you must you must undo your blue to to get into a purple rhythm which is self-organizing which may look very uh, unorganized for a blue person if they don't emerge themselves in it you know or blue thinking if they don't emerge so it's almost like the traffic of uh germany on or uh, Australia that you superimpose on the traffic, the structure in India, Egypt, Dar es Salaam. It goes like this, it's self-organizing, but in that there's beauty, there's stories. So, you know, some of the things is like Canadians that's beautifully purple will tell me things like, you're just as respected in the place as the size of your feet. <laughs> oh, I love that. I, so if I come to your country with big feet, I will not be respected. Uh -huh. And um, that, uh, they have insight. It's huge, rich, na rich nature. Um, you know, and, and that I want to say, Heidi, you too, how you came with small feet. You didn't <laughs> come with big feet. So yeah. you were respected here. People loved you here. Mm -hmm. um, another saying that I really particularly <laughs> like is also Ghanaian saying, they say, do not upset the crocodile if you want to cross the river. Yeah? <laughs> okay. So, and that summarizes all the field of study of systems thinking, where we try and map out where's the leverage point in systems so that we intervene there. They know it anyway. They know humanity. because uh, They know relatedness. In my corporate world, I try and teach corporate leaders to share from a storytelling perspective the story, the vision of the company. In purple, you sit around in a circle and you share those stories. It's spontaneous. We have unlearned that relatedness. Exactly. Yeah. And that's and also team. what I, I take from this uh, journey, from this trip to you and 
from when we went around and saw all these. One of the beauty of purple I saw was the aliveness mm. of these people, the children and the self-organization. I was so impressed when we were in this, um, how, how is it called, the big house where we saw the children. Uh, was it the oh. Ponte Tower, right? It was Ponte Tower. Yeah. 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 And the children were so, you know, different ages and agile and we, how do you say, alive, but there yeah. was no shouting. There was no noise in this sense. In yeah. which, uh, children uh, places, they would scream and shout and fight. And they were so, you know, it was a smooth way of being together. And nobody really told them what they have to do. And I thought, wow, that's something we have for, f forgotten. Oh, we can't do that. And you have told us, and it made so much sense that for getting up the spiral, saying up, we lose something. And we are not even aware. Yes. We think we are so much better now, and we don't realize what we have lost. Only yes. maybe when we think we are struggling all the time, and still I'm not on the top, and still I'm nervous, and still, you know, then there might come a doubt that something yeah. is missing. Yeah. Yes. And I think theoretically, it makes sense that we must transcend and include, transcend mm -hmm. and include, that's theory. So theory say, if you get past uh, beige, you integrate that superpower and you go, you go purple, you integrate that superpower. But in real life, for me to um, get out of purple, I must reject it in mm -hmm. real life. So for me, um, if I... Uh, if I was part of a tribe and I was Rika, the daughter of this, this, this person. And in some of the, the um, taxis that we drove, the taxi drivers would share their tribal names. They can say that I'm the, the son of this, 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 uh, sometimes up to 30 <laughs> generations back. Eh? So now think of that. I'm a child of this village, but now I want to run away. I want to be Rika. I don't want to be your daughter anymore. I want to be Rika. Rika. I was, who am I? The, the, the impact that it has on purple is come back, my child. You are being westernized. Come back. Don't do that. So purple do not necessarily want to be red or blue or up the spiral. They actually want to protect the traditional norms. Hey? So we, And the same thing um, blue rejects red because red is egocentric and even social oppression. We cannot globally deal with social oppression. So we suppress it internationally uh, with rules and regulations and policing and whatever we do. Um, so we do not transcend and include. And uh, especially not in the first year. Mm -hmm. In the second year, if I, if I really want to be yellow, which means... I must be able to use the superpower of beige, or the first year, beige, blue, purple, red. I must be able to constellate it in me. If I uh, deny it, how can I then be yellow? How can I? I cannot. Yeah. You know, a second argument to that is a, a, a theoretical argument is Graves said that uh, yellow is beige to the square or the inferior of it. The, mm. integral, the integral of it. So it is again beige, but at a different level of consciousness. How mm. can I claim to be yellow if I deny beige? I mean, it's, it goes together. Like, how can I be turquoise on the second tier, but I don't know that turquoise and purple is similar just on a much bigger complexity of, of consciousness. So um, then I cannot be that either. You mm -hmm. know? It's not integral, ultimately. Yeah, that's, that makes sense. What I would like to ask you is, we were in this village, and you said the, the girl, I've forgotten her name, she works with you, and she can I mean, come... I mean, I mean, yeah. Yes. And she can come home in her village only once a month. So this is the situation that somebody wants to achieve something for their life and go out of the village. How, how is that then seen and how does she manage? Yeah, so um, that's a very good question. I, I, um, this specific person I know now well because she works with me, um, she maintained her purple roots. She didn't reject that. So she still embrace it she still go home and give back she 
physically dressed differently if she works in a different a blue setting or an orange setting and she holds her body differently as when she's in that setting but um, that lady look after 18 different people with a salary so 18 people are are reliant on her so in her community she's also uh, being she's very proud uh, she walks up straight and she's seen as a leadership figure because she can bring back a lot of money now that doesn't always happen you know sometimes people reject it as being primitive or i don't want to be traditional or um you know um I want to be American or Westernized, like on TV or like Europe. Although people, yes, see a lot of American TV, you know, not necessarily European networks. Um, so then there's a, a identity issue in Africa um, as to who am I, you know? Um, it's a huge issue and there's a lot of work to be done here to remember um, and to... Um, really celebrate roots and not destroy. So it's how can it be both and? How can we emerge into new worlds um, where there's technology and things like that, yet I don't fo- lose my gift, yeah. this powerful magic of purple. And does it happen or uh, do people have awareness of the preciousness of their roots? And despite of... Uh, having these roots wanting to go out and go up the spiral and trying to get things together? Um, I did. If I didn't, I spent six years in Ghana. If mm. I did not do that, I would have answered this differently. I would have answered it from guilt. Uh-huh. Because there's a lot of white guilt in South Africa of apartheid. Mm-hmm. I would have answered it from if we change life conditions, people will go up the spiral and things like that. I would have answered it differently. But what Ghana have taught me is it's a purple country. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's an educated country. It has British education, blue education. Um, it had colonialization. It um, is the place where in West Africa where most um, uh, slaves were sent from there to New Orleans, to America, to Chicago, to those places. So um, um, it is a a country that really could be very angry or reject uh, blue and for hurting their tribalism. Yet they give colonial colonial people, white people, they call them brunies. Bruni means uh, your skin is light and you come over the sea, from over the sea. I give them the name of Sunday, uh, but I don't tell them that, that, you know, it's a little bit unsaid. It's purple. In purple, there's a lot of things that's unsaid and secretive. And they um, say that it's Sunday because they say white people, Brunis, came with open hands. They taught our children. And uh, in purple, children are particularly important. Uh, my children must have a better life than I. Education is important. So what Ghana taught me is even if there's blue education, even if there's corporate settings, even if they, are, uh, they go and study internationally, but with the purpose to come and make Ghana better, my tribe better, almost like Irene, just internationally on a collective uh, uh, corporate level. Um, they do not want to be any other color but purple. They don't want to do that. Um, uh, uh, yeah, they embrace that. South Africa is hard. And I think that is why Don Beck came to South Africa and Graves sent Beck here on his deathbed. Because for, for Graves and for Beck and for Laubscher, South Africa is a country where all these thinking structures are in the same microcosmos, all the colors of the spiral, where Ghana can be, you can say Ghana is purple, you can say Australia in the cities is largely blue, you can make the logic, you can you can analyze the logic. South Africa is extremely diverse, so it is a hard, it's a cauldron of diversity, yeah. Yeah, and when you spoke, I remembered the first speaker on the conference, if I have understood him right, he said, it's not so much that the Europeans have exported their, uh, uh, no, come over and 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 took our um, 
first material and and um, you know got yes. everything out of the country that's not really the um, the colonialization that's not really the problem but he said the problem is that we have exported our way of thinking yeah and that was really for me a, such a big aha because yeah. everything we do science whatever it is is in this framework in our european framework um, and yeah. we have a hard time to even think that there could be a different way of living you know yeah. i mean yeah. in green people try to but but they are still in the same framework uh, as before yeah. and, and green wants to fix us hey eh? so green wants green believes everybody so equal mm -hmm. so we are so equal that we cannot speak about differences because we are equal um, but we are not equal in, we are not, uh, um, purple don't make money, uh, because it doesn't ask, how do I make money? Um, orange can make money or create money because it's entrepreneurial, but green comes from a perspective of, uh, we can fix you. We can heal you. We can make you better. Purple do not want to be made better. They are very happy with what they have. They just want it's a better life for their children. It's yes, a question. Yeah. What, I, what I realized that even these attempts, which seem to be uh, philanthropic, as you said, yeah. they're still in the same mindset. They are still continuing the same uh, thought of, 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 of uh, thought structure, you know? Yeah. And it, it really shook me to the bones that I thought I was also so clear that this uh, is the only way of thinking, you know? I, all, even spirodynamics, Ken Wilber, all these things, philosophy, they are all in this line. Yeah. And uh, logically, because, uh, you know, it's dominating, but only the idea that there could be another way. And if other people would have uh, taken the lead, the yeah. world would be completely different. We can't, e we can't even imagine how it is because we don't, have the ability to change yeah. our thought structure that yeah. really you know and uh, we now are so much concerned about money and about extraction of of, of material from africa and now is china uh, buying all africa this uh, is, is bad but mm -hmm. what the underlying bad you know nobody thinks about it and this was really oh yeah. wow i think you are speaking about dr neba Mm -hmm. um, and he wrote a doctorate which was phenomenal on colonial, post-colonial thought and philosophy, but he wrote um, on doing human differently. And then um, some articles doing human better. And at the end that became, it was our keynote speaker and it became the topic of our conference is mm -hmm. doing better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And this was so surprising. I don't think ever this could have been a topic in Europe because yes. we, we, we just have not the awareness of that. So yeah. it was really very, very, <laughs> very surprising. Humanity is the gift of purple. Humanity and relation, net, relation -ness, relatedness yeah. is yeah. the gift of purple. And storytelling, there's a huge richness in terms of metaphorical storytelling that yeah. Africa can bring, yeah. <laughs> so from your position down there in South Africa and having all this knowledge and knowing all these people, what could you tell us, sort of a little bit arrogant intercoolists <laughs> in, in America and in Europe, what is the real, the real issue? What, what, what do you think we should focus on instead of, you know, being everybody so equal <laughs> and not being allowed to say black and white anymore or not even, not even mm -hmm. ask people anymore, where do you come from? Uh, you know, yes. things like that. It's, it's not allowed anymore. <laughs> yeah, um, that's, a, that's a very good question, Heidi. I actually do not know, but I will think with you. Um, so the, the one thing that comes from African spiritual consciousness and that sits in the field of Busi Velakati that was the stream leader of one of the legs of, yeah, we had a spiral leg and we had an integral leg and then we have an African philosophy leg where Busi sat. And he um, spoke about, or speaks about um, uh, two aspects of African spiritual consciousness, which is identity and positionality. 
and positionalities in which time and space you have been born into, in which context, uh, where is home for you? Because that speaks about uh, some of your, your insights that you can bring. And um, I think that if the world can remember their purple a bit better, if I can, if my, I open my eyes to find the magic. Um, I recently found purple magic in Montana in America, where in, if you ask me before, can there be real purple in America, I would have most probably said no. But this, I found myself in a community of cowboys. Mm -hmm. where, um, the old cowboy told me that he doesn't like technology much because um, it's not real. And um, he said to me, it takes 70 years to be a good old cowboy. And then you cannot be that anymore because your fingers are down and your arm don't work. And then they do something that they call neighboring. So it's, commun it's com as communal as that village that we live. We, we visit. So everybody takes as, as neighbors, but uh, neighboring as a verb. We neighbor together to, to work together. Um, it's one of the most beautiful systems I ever worked in, in the middle of America, Montana, and Billings in Montana. So um, I think if we can all just start looking for, um, for other realities that's not defined as I, we call it Western, um, but the, the blue thinking or the even the orange and green thinking that is documented in books. Mm -hmm. But oral, oral stories that, that comes if the two of us relate with each other. That's where I found you, Heidi. I found Heidi, I found your soul on a purple level, not on a blue or other level, you know, um, on that relatedness level. Um, we will find more purple in the world than we think. And that's exactly what was attractive also to me, because also when you said um, purple, yes, you are purple, you know, yeah. and in, in our uh, circles, that would be a, a curse, you know, yes. you are sort of primitive, but you made it very clear that this is something beautiful and in the moment, maybe maybe I'm not purple now, but there yeah, are moments yeah. in which I am, and then yeah. there are moments in which I'm yellow, and there are moments in which I'm red, hopefully, and there are moments in which I'm blue. And nothing is has a value uh, stamped yeah. on it, you know? And yeah. this was also the big insight I took from you, because yes, people say it. Yeah. Uh, even Ken Wilber says it, you yes. know? But live it, see it, lived yeah. is completely different thing but you know i would like to ask you another question it's about community you said that is a community and it's built on purple um let's mm -hmm. say purple uh, values or, yes. or so what is actually the difference between the, these attempts today to construct community from a green perspective which yeah. seems to be so uh, so somehow unnatural to me you know <laughs> Yeah, so um, you, uh, in purple, there's still, if you take the organizing structure, so what Don did well is he had a, a, he documented the thinking structure of all the different uh, value systems in a type of an archetype. Um, if you look at the archetype of purple, there's still a leader in the middle that organized around something. Where in green, we just organize in a circle without a leader. So we see it leaderless, we share leadership which means we are so equal. We are very, very equal. So we cannot speak about uh, differences. So yeah, excuse I, me, but I, leadership is very, very much uh, a no, no word. So yeah, it, it ends up that there is no leader at the end and things go out of rail and, and then uh, red elements come in and destroy everything. So the yeah. self-organization, I don't see it there. <laughs> exactly exactly that's the side effect of green it's the side effect of green is exactly in, in business it becomes indecisiveness because then i consult i consult all over the space but there's little decision making um so it's not a, a, a optimal a, a organizing form for a business really at the end although we try those leaderless systems in some spaces um 
but what happened in this space, uh, you know, <laughs> why I know it's not green it, and why it's so purple, this specific space in America, is um, we, I asked the guy, how big is your, how many cattle do you have? Because that's a commercial question that you will ask in Africa in, uh, with a farm. If a guy is a farmer, you ask how, how many cattle do you have? How, 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 he says, just enough cattle for my land. Then I ask him, how much land do you have? And he says, just enough land for my cattle. So there's no commercial drive. There's no um, uh, need to, he doesn't want to travel. So his daughter came to this conference, but he, he didn't like that much because he says it's his honor to stay on his field of land and not go past the river. Uh, his soul belonged to this land. So a good question to ask is where does your soul belong to? Because in purple, it's to your land. It's that physical piece of land. If I ask a green community, where's your soul? Where do, where's home for you? Um, they don't specify it as this piece of land. No, we don't even know in green yeah. where it's home for us. Exactly. We are sort of scattered, no? Yeah. It's in one or other international community or in a philo philosophy, it's in a philosophy rather than, I just want to turn it like this, that there's a bit more light. Yeah. <laughs> also, I will switch on the light if it gets too dark. But um, yeah, the, um, we don't know, but purple do. They go home to their land. Uh, they honor the land. Um, yeah. So another question we know, and it seems still to be the case that the development goes in, in these levels. So after yeah. purple would be red, how is red expressed yes. in, in South Africa and how do you deal with it and how do purple people deal with it? I think you showed us a little bit when we were in the center of Joburg. Yeah. So um, look, theoretically, um, red must be met with red or differently. Uh, all thinking structures should be met with the same thinking structure, else it lights off. Like you spoke earlier about the dynamic between green and red. Of course, yes. If green goes green with red, red will take kill uh, it will break green because red is egocentric and it wants power so um how it manifests in south africa is in social uprising it can manifest in like terrorism or attacks um uh, it is a um, instant gratification system i want it now and I can take it and you know it's developmental theory so there's lower unhealthier manifestations and then healthier manifestations uh, unhealthy manifestation is I can take your phone because I want it now and you have it so you're I'm entitled to your phone it's mm -hmm. not taking it, it's taking it it's my right to have it so we have a bit of that in South actually quite a bit of that in South Africa I think about 15 percent of people so um um but but then again, high rate is beautiful, eh? So high rate is powerful. Is I know who I am. It is um, uh, uh, the ability to respond uh, very quickly to a crisis situation, be the hero or the warrior of it. Mm -hmm. and often purple organized around rate. So in South Africa, we have lots of union leaders, uh, trade union leaders in corporate that. Um, there's a lot of purple that they organize around the red uh, trade union because blue management or orange management are too scared to speak to purple. Ah, okay. And they don't know the language to speak yeah. with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or the, even the style. Purple will expect, uh, accept everybody like you guys were. They are, if, if we come, if, if, if blue, orange come with... Um, humanity with respect to purple they will really take care of you like a guest because it's almost like a literal belief in the bible you know you may you are a stranger you may be an angel i will literally look after you more um but but management don't make use of that in south africa we are scared uh, and therefore don't connect and therefore a lot of people that wants to organize around their norm their, their natural leader will then organize around a red union union leader a trade mm -hmm. union and then we have strikes and um things like that here um a lot of that actually we burn down I mean, um libraries um mm -hmm. A lot of those types of unrest uh, in yeah, South Africa. Not good, no. But so I'm wondering: is it because the management is still white, and uh, and how do 
black people who go into this uh, these positions how are they behaving how are they handling yeah. that you see, the, the, uh, this is what Don really helped me to understand, is that this is uh, the, uh, bl often black leaders that is promoted is blue mm -hmm. and not purple. So uh, uh, it, it is actually not nationality, it is thinking structure. So the difficulty in South Africa is the white, white is 8%. There's also purple white people here and beige white people here, but blue is promoted. So apartheid that was a blue system got white people in executive positions, but apartheid was dismantled almost 30 years ago. And uh, leaders in South Africa that's currently in uh, uh, African, black, um, think in blue or orange ways. Uh -huh. Because they followed the rules, they followed the processes, got promoted. The blue thinking got them promoted to blue top management. So I'm, I'm more, I'm more, see more of an international leadership challenge mm -hmm. that on the top of organizations are blue and orange and the bottom of organizations are more purple red and there's a disconnect there because we don't speak to each other um uh, we don't connect and, 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 and blue is scared of red eh? so that's another example that in the at the end it's not a question of race as yes. everywhere is promoted racism, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It's, it's a completely yeah. different thing. And in South Africa, you probably can see it much better than in America. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's just because of the, the, free, uh, the distribution of our, demo, uh, our uh, democrat, uh, uh, um, the, the, number, uh, the number of this, uh, how we are represented, uh, the different nationalities here. Uh, we can really see, it. but a lot of, um, uh, top leaders really act Western, and then the purple fathers will say, oh, my son, you went to the city, you went to Johannesburg, and you become like them, you know, you're not like us anymore, but it is in the rejection then of purple and the embodying of blue, uh, which is not tribal anymore, so there's a split between purple and red and red and blue, and blue and orange even where blue is risk adverse in corporate and orange is risk taking. So all these split sitting systems. So second tier thinking is actually, or integral is really important to weave together a new narrative, a new tapestry of being, but not if we underestimate the power that all these different thinking structures bring. You know, it's superpowers. Yeah, you know what I just thought? Uh, that's now what is happening in, just now in South Africa is practically what has happened to us in a long period of time in, in, in Europe. And you have it all right now. And we can study it, how it is, the development yeah. happens. That's, that's yeah. the main thing. <laughs> it is like that. It's here. And it's that a rejection. It's a difficult one because, you know, like if you take Irene's village, um, if Irene went back into that village blue and not purple, she will be rejected by the village. Mm -hmm. If she goes back to the village red, then she will be rejected by that village. So some people in South Africa will, mm -hmm. on executive level, will physically, if they go home, stop at the garage, put on their traditional clothes. It can be Indian clothes. It can be Zulu clothes and go and take a traditional role back in the society, like the female will put herself in a, um, a, 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 a submissive position. Mm -hmm. uh, some of my corporate friend CEOs will, if they go home to their parents, they will sit lower than their parents with the eyes lower and they will not excuse themselves under the par until the parents say, you can go now. So they, they go back to purple again but um the question is can we embody the wisdom of those system or do we reject it i think that is uh, the universal challenge so the next challenge will be how the children of those people will then uh keep the tradition but in a way which is <laughs> not yeah. so fixed you know so exactly that i am switching on the light it, I yeah. very okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's winter there, and the uh, day is winter. over. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. dark. It's cold. It's cold here. You must come and feel how cold it is now. Oh, no, thank you. It's nice and hot on your side, right? Yeah, it's warm now here. Yeah. 
Yeah, that is the question, Heidi, is how can the children integrate um, that? And then um, there's different opinions about this. You know, Lorraine has a different opinion. This is better now. I can see myself again. Lorraine <laughs> has a different opinion than what Beck has in terms of what the impact of um, technology will be. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Don Beck is willing to explore that one don't necessarily will follow all these structures if technology, you know, this new, like fourth industrial revolution type of thinking mm -hmm. that introduces other cultures to it. But, you know, working in Hong Kong and Singapore, where they seemingly blue and orange alive and well, uh, in Singapore, if I am a mother, and I lost my first son, and my second son wants to get married. I must first marry off the soul of my son to a daughter that also passed away, and there's a spirit marriage before the second child can marry a real body. So it's in, in uh, Hong Kong, there's spirit houses, there's ancestor worship, um, this all the symptoms are, or the, the manifestations of purple just with orange technology so Lorraine's question is actually quite cool she asked what why do people use technology and mm -hmm. purple use it to take pictures of the family to send money to the village and not to export or play buy bitcoins or um, not for orange reasons you know so, yeah, I don't know what uh, technology or the, uh, it, it really will do. Um, I do believe that we need, it, it, I, I like this system of graves that survived for almost 100 years. Um, and uh, there's evidence for me, it helped me a, a lot in my practice to understand from a multicultural perspective, mm -hmm. a, re a real lot. Yeah, and I'm wondering if we can the green meme, if, if the green meme could learn a little bit about the real purple. Yes. And, uh, and I don't know, integrate that instead of this strange, I don't know, strange community building, no? where, where it's also, how can I say, without rules. In, 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 in purple, there are very clear rules and everybody is willing to accept them yeah. because they and make you know, sense. If you do not follow the rule in purple, there will be like um, uh, real implications on you. Um, so you just have to go to a rural village where somebody steals somebody, something from somebody. There's like in, uh, what do they call it in English? Um, uh, the law of the jungle or something like that. I'm not sure what's the saying, but the villagers will hunt down that person and almost kill him if he steals something. So nobody will steal from nobody. Mm -hmm. There's a huge amount of rules. There's, like you spoke earlier at that Ponty building where we went, uh, there's no alcohol allowed there. There's uh, 3,000 people stay, adults stay there, but they don't drink because there's children. And um, the community regulated, self-regulated, but there's rules, clear rules. And in green, we have forgot that, that there's rules needed to make a collective work. Mm -hmm. And yeah. in green, we try then, when we want to get out of green, to do sort of artificial rules. And they, they expand into, a, I don't know, a big mass because you want them to... to, um, to uh, how do you say, to, to, to look after every little thing, you know, yes. and then it becomes a book. And that's, that's not the sense of being in a community, you know, that's yeah. the trust in the ability and the willingness of people to be part of the community. I think that is what's missing in green, which in, in purple is still there. And when you say that, then the children who are already in a different level of development, they still come back and embody that level which is not their center of gravity but they still yeah. have it and they still honor it and i think that's something we could learn in the west wow. it's beautiful idea and um, i promise you it's magical it's really magical it's almost idyllically beautiful it's yeah. um but it's not commercial no it doesn't ask how do we make money 
it doesn't ask how can I export cows to South America that I can be rich. It doesn't ask those questions. So it doesn't build corporate. And so the question is, that's our way of thinking. The question is, is that really the only way of thinking? What yeah. would the other way of thinking uh, create if yeah. we allowed it to, 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 to take over a little bit, no? A absolutely. You know, you made me think of something that I forgot. And it was a funny experience. It's an experience in Cusco in Peru. Mm -hmm. If you go to Machu Picchu, you, you, you first visit Cusco and then you go up to Machu Picchu. Mm -hmm. And there is, a, um, it's a, uh, you know, the Spanish uh, Inquisition happened in South America. So uh, all the pagan churches were um, uh, um, taken to the ground and then uh, as, uh, um, uh, 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 Rome Catholic churches were built on the ashes of it. But because the Spanish people couldn't always go overseas with, um, they taught the local craftspeople to make the wood and the art but they copied the big um, Spanish uh, artworks. So, of course, then there's this Last Supper of Da Vinci, where Jesus is in the middle with all the, his disciples, and everything is copied, the same size, everything the same. It's exactly like it was. Um, however, they eat a specific dish, which is called kui which is a little guinea fowl that they eat at special occasions, but they leave the teeth in of the guinea fowl that one can see it's not a rat. It's one of their delicacies. Now that's very small painted in the middle of the painting. There's a queen. So I, when you know, it's like so funny because even if they copied the superficial, uh, whatever blue or purple or whatever a, a blue religion or whatever it come from, the, from, from Spain, they still have the little humor to say, you cannot really kill us. There's the queen in the middle of this painting of Jesus in the Last Supper. They just added that. And, um, you know, if you want to look for purple, you will find it in, in, in funny spaces. And there's a nice humor, uh, a nice um, uh, humanity. Uh, uh, and they giggle at us. You know, purple giggle at the rest of the world. They right? think we waste our time with rules and regulations. They think we uh, want money that um, uh, they, they don't even conceptualize work-life balance the way that the West conceptualizes it. They don't work to have off, they work to live. Mm -hmm. and that's a huge difference in conceptualization of work-life balance, eh? Mm -hmm. I work to live, so I don't mind. This one driver that I drove with in Ghana that drove for 30 years the same road twice a day, 600 kilometers in one way, 600 kilometers, every day for 30 years. And I would say, are you not tired? No, why must I be tired? Don't you want to do something else? No, why must I do something else? I can feed my children. My children went to university. I'm happy. I'm proud. I, I, I'm, I, I'm proud to be a driver. You know, um, I think we have missed that or, or unlearned that. Absolutely. Because we want always more, 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 mm -hmm. more, better, 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 better. That seems to be the main vocabulary in our languages. I think so. so yeah, uh, Rika. That was really the big gift of this travel to you and with you to have these insights, which I try to formulate in my uh, video, which I did last month. And as I said, it's published also in the wisdomfactory.net and you can look for my name and or South Africa and then it will come up. And now from you who are really in the middle of all that and who are working all the time with that and you have all these experiences with people of all sorts you know you are really embodying it and i am really grateful that you came with me here and also explained a little bit also a little bit of theory that is needed <laughs> so that okay. people know what we are talking about so would you like to to tell me a little bit about the future before we stop the future of uh, spiral dynamics and integral in south africa Yes. So um, thank you, Heidi. First, I, I just want to say that thank you that you came with your eyes and thank you for seeing. Mm -hmm. Because purple is subtle and a lot of people yeah. miss it. They just don't see it. So I'm yeah. really We had your, your guidance. If I was a normal tourist, I wouldn't have seen that. That's uh, quite good. But you did see it. So thank you, to that. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, 
Heidi, I um, really would like to continue my work with Lorraine. Um, uh, so uh, in, uh, we really managed to at least populate Purple better with her doctorate. And it's also published in nine different hand, academic handbooks and at the universities, at least where I to teach, um, there's people that study spiral and integral as uh, from academic perspective and find it particularly helpful and meaningful. Um, one of the universities even have a integral research methodology um, as a met method to, to study um, uh, like a, fix, a mixed methods or a, um, a open ethnography or life history. They use integral research as a way of, of studying uh, methodology. And um, we are busy doing BEIGE. Uh, also, Anna-Marie Voorhofer and the Center there, Den Haag, um, it's also a Center of Human Emergence, also working on the beauty of BEIGE. Uh, but of course, they see it from a very different perspective because of where they sit, their positionality. I mean, they are in Europe and they deal with refugees. One out of 113 people in the world is a refugee. It's a lot of refugees that we are, a lot of BEIGE that is um, uh, confronting humanity. And um, of course, with that comes um, the absolute very practical reality of that we deal with in health is that um, as we adapt to our environment, we, we breed specific antibodies for diseases. And now as people from mid of Africa flee into Europe, there's not the same antibodies in uh, bodies and it's really a disease can spread in a different way. And I like to use that metaphorically because thinking disease can spread, you know, the way in which we think spread. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The boundaries are not that, that clear anymore that we um, can contain different thinking structures. It's merging and internationally it's merging. So I, uh, boundaries are collapsing between thinking structures as well. So I really would like to continue with Lorraine on, spa, on beige and the, popular, uh, the uh, documentation of that with her as long as possible. And then maybe even tackle red from this angle, theoretically at least, because people see red as ugly. Yeah, and it's dangerous also. And yes. often it is, you know. So. Often it is. Often it is, but it's also beauty. There's also beautiful red, which um, it's, uh, we must re, uh, just re revisit it again in today's life. And my own, my own work, I really try and redo the original academic work of Graves, but in today's setting, in this setting, in South Africa at least. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would like to continue that as well. <laughs> uh, we do spiral dynamics and integral certifications uh, as we go. I really would like to continue the relations that we built across uh, boundaries. Um, uh, for me, it was a wonderful tour when you came because I saw Africa through your eyes and even your video clip on your, uh, I send it to everybody. <laughs> your, uh, the clip that you made and um, on the Wisdom Factory and everybody's totally enjoying it because they see how you see us you know uh, which is helpful because one don't see yourself um, often uh, from outside yourself yeah and um, I would love to continue uh, the integral European connections with the conference and those uh, uh, there's a lot of people that next year want to come to the conference from Africa there's 30 mm -hmm. 40 that say that they would like to go. Uh, now, I don't know if they will get the money in time, but there's a huge uh, interest that we created this, this time around. So, and then, of course, there was that integral conference in um, Colombia, and mm -hmm. we start to speak across boundaries like that. So, I, yeah, I'm here for a long time, Heidi, and I hope you too. I mm -hmm. want to do a lot of work still. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. So, yes. So, uh, and last thing, uh, how can people reach you if they want to, to connect? Thank you, Heidi. Uh, yes, and I would love to connect. I'm curious of nature. I want to know and I want to study. Um, and my email address uh, is rika, R-I-C-A, rika, at Mandala Consulting. It's just like you said, M-A-N-D-A-L-A, -A, Mandala Consulting dot co dot za zoot africa at the end and so rika at mandala consulting dot co dot za and i would really like to connect um with whoever i can wonderful so thank you for this hour you have dedicated for our memories and elaboration of what is possible in both parts of the world that's wonderful thank I you 
believe that you have spent the time with me and it's really sacred for me, Heidi. Thank you. And you have become a good friend. <laughs> and you know, in um, Africa, there's a greeting in Zoom. It says, uh, translated as, I see you. Yeah. Uh, so that you, Heidi, I see you. I see you too. <laughs> right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you for the time. <laughs> Bye.